Hello friends, I'm Ram Lakshmanan. I'm the architect of Y Crash. Friends, in our uh, previous sessions, we spoke about the architecture of Java Virtual Threads, its performance impacts and the benefits what we, we can get through Java Virtual Threads. So in this session, we will talk about what are the pitfalls or what are the things that you want to watch out when you are moving from the platform threads to the virtual threads. But friends, before you watch this uh, clip, I highly recommend you to watch our the introductory clip so that you can understand a little bit, it gives you a context of virtual threads before you watch this one, right? So the link for that is given in the description. So friends, there is three things that you want to watch when you are moving from platform threads to virtual threads. The first one is avoid the synchronized blocks or the methods, right? See friends, this is how we typically write a synchronized method, right? I say I get data and I can mark a method as synchronized method. When I mark a thread as a synchronized method, only one thread will be allowed to execute this get data method at any given point in time. All other threads cannot execute it, right? They will be put into a blocked state. So because of the JDK's current underlying implementation limitation that I'm recording this video session in January, 2023, right? Because of the underlying uh, limitation, the thread, the virtual thread uh, also, actually when you see, typically in all other cases, when a thread is waiting or in a block, right? The virtual thread will not be assigned to underlying platform thread or an operating system thread. It is moved and it's moved to the memory. Whereas when it when you use this synchronized method or a synchronized block, at that point it, it gets stuck still the operating system thread and operating and the platform thread is locked with the virtual thread. Unfortunately, if there is synchronized block, the virtual thread will not be to this uh, Java heap, which and it will not occupy enough, it will be using the platform thread. So you won't see much uh, benefit, right? So this is a current limitation, but I think it will be addressed in the future releases of JDK. So if your code is using synchronized block and if any move to virtual thread, you may not see much difference. But to address this, to mitigate what you can do is you can use this re-entrant lock, which is part of the concurrency package. So here, what I can do, say if I'm going to read it the same code, synchronize get data, what I can do, I can use re-entrant lock. Within this get data method, I can say obtain the lock and make the database call and then release it. This does exactly the same thing what this guy does. But the only thing is you get the benefit of virtual threads. That is your threads, when it when it's getting locked, when it's not executing, it will, it's going to move back to the Java heap and occupies very less memory. And when the when it gets released, now we, when it's going to make a call, then it's going to assign to an actual platform thread and operating system thread, it can execute. So you get the benefit. When you move from platform thread to virtual thread, you may want to look at doing this refactoring, the code refactoring. And the second thing is, sometimes the developers, what we do, say if you want to limit the access to a particular resource, right? Say I have a backend database. I, I want to send only 10 calls to my backend concurrently at any given point in time. In that circumstance, we as a developers, we tend to use thread pool. See, this is how the code would typically look. So here I have an executor, which is basically a thread pool and a queue to it. So here I say I have 10 threads, I'm configuring 10 threads. I say here is a backend call I'm making. Here I can say if I'm, since I'm giving us 10, only 10 threads would be allowed to make a call, right? I do this. Okay, unfortunately, in if you move to virtual threads, right? What's gonna happen? You cannot use this API, right? In, our, uh, in one of our earlier video talks, we, talk, we spoke about what different APIs which is available to make an, uh, to create a virtual threads. Right, uh, we will share the link in this description. So here we cannot use this one. So you have to use only that uh, new task per executor. When you do that, for every request, it's going to. So I, I wouldn't be able to control this one. I cannot say I, I want to create only ten threads. We don't have that control right now. So how do we mitigate this problem? Is you want to use the semaphore. So semaphore is a very powerful data structure, right? Uh, and we uh, will talk about it in another video clip. So here I can say in a semaphore, I can define as a limit as 10. This means when I set this limit as 10, that means this semaphore 
will limit only 10 concurrent calls to the backend system. I can rewrite my code like this. I have to refactor the code like this so that I can get the advantage of virtual threads. So this is the second thing what you want to watch out. And then the third one, what you want to be looking at is use of the thread local variable, right? Um, friends, uh, there is another video clip where we'll share the link where we talk about the thread local, right? Thread local is a very powerful mechanism, right? So where the variables is only visible particular thread, right? If you uh, end up using a lot of thread local variables, think what's going to happen. Say virtual threads, I can create millions of threads. I can create several thousands or millions of threads. So I'm going to create those threads. And then now, when, and if they have a thread local, I will end up having several millions of thread local objects as well. If your thread local object tends to be large in size, you're going to have several copies of those thread local variables, then it can immediately fill up your memory. So you want to look at limiting the number of thread local variables you store and the size of it, right? When you go for this virtual thread architecture. Okay. So these are the three things that what you want to be watching when you go for virtual thread architecture implementation, right? Okay. Any questions, friends, on this? Okay. Assume there are no questions. Then thank you everyone for watching this video clip. Right. We'll come back to you with yet another interesting session.